Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Happy 2023. Um, I hope you had a fantastic festive season. Uh, you ate too much, you drank too much, you had a great time with friends and family. Um, I wish you all the best for the year ahead of us. So, um, on today's episode, um, we're, well, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you a, a, another set of 10 jazz albums for your consideration to see if they will work in your collection. Um, I'm hoping that at least you know, maybe two or three you've never heard of before. Um, and that would be a real boon for me in terms of I've introduced you to something that you hadn't heard before and perhaps you're going to like it um, and want to add it to your personal collection as well or at least know of its existence so um, that's the aim today but before we start going through these albums and me sharing my brief observations of my experience with these albums um, I just want to do a bit of housekeeping it's just a bit of fun um, hopefully this video won't be too long but if it is, you know what I'm like already. Um, there will be a harsh jump cut somewhere along the line where I've got to splice uh, two sections of the video together. So don't be surprised if that happens. Um, I'll try and keep the video down in length, but as you well know, if you are one of those who have been around the channel for a while, I'm one of those people that once they start talking, they just can't stop. So there you go. So to start off with the housekeeping, um, I just want to say at this point, um, a thanks, well, just want to state that I'm truly grateful for those who have shown the channel support, not only from the beginning when I first, when I launched my first video on YouTube, which was a, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, it was a traumatic experience for me, I'm not despite the videos and how I may come across, um, I'm not really a kind of public person in terms of, I'm, well, I'm not a theatre major. I, I don't necessarily, I'm not the personality who's use front and centre in most things. Um, so there you go. This has been a, a learning experience for all of us. So um, just want to say thank you to, again to the, those who have been here from the beginning I would like to thank those who have recently subscribed to the channel um, it's truly humbling um, to have this situation <laughs> happen um, this niche uh, you know sector of the of music and you know not only jazz but vinyl as well um, thank you thank you so much it, it really does mean a lot to me um, have noticed as well, um, just going through the analytics, and I'll talk about some more about that a bit later. Um, it's, it's abundantly clear that <laughs> um, when I deviate from uh, jazz videos, um, the actual viewership for any particular video, which is non-jazz, is lesser than those, sorry, yeah, lesser than those which are jazz. Um, the, there's, there's a couple of things behind that. I, I don't just only like jazz and um, over a period of time I'll, what the, the kind of thing is when I'm doing videos about non-jazz, it's kind of like to show you the audience that it's kind of like doing your schoolwork and showing the way that you came to the answer. So not just giving an answer as these albums are good, but if you see or hear the other material that I listen to, you might get a better understanding of why certain jazz albums are attractive to me and some aren't. It's, it's just showing you my working. So I do feel it's useful for you to, you know, you, the audience to see how my process of thinking, how I yeah just my taste you you kind of get a better sense of that but if i just i think if if i just stuck strictly to jazz some of my ideas of what what i like or what i present to you will be just completely out of context so that's why i kind of you know i'm still going to be doing videos about non-jazz 
albums which I like. So, yeah. So hopefully you'll come with me on this journey. I will understand if you're not as interested in, in it. I, I, I totally understand. But there may be one, two or three of you out there who do, <laughs> you know, who do find something interesting in what I'm showing you on a non-jazz video occasion. So that's, that's being said. Uh... Da, 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 da. Uh, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you to all those who in the comment section have told me about albums that they've been listening to or what they would recommend that I should listen to. Um, I have put them all on a list um, of albums to pursue. And if I can get them... Okay, because each region where, where you live in the world will be dependent on what jazz catalogs are available to you relatively easily. So um, those who have made suggestions, I have made a, a, a huge list. Well, I've, I've got a huge like file where I keep all the notes of things which have been suggested to me and I will seek them out. I will listen to them and I will purchase them if they work for me so i just wanted to say thank you to all those who have taken the time and trouble to say hey perhaps you should listen to this album seeing as you like this one you might like that one as well so thank you um i really do appreciate that um what else did i want to say uh i can move on from that yeah let's just go into the analytics as such um so over the last quarter, three months, the last three months of the year, um, I had a look at the audience and where they originate from, that sort of thing. I just find it, you know, interesting. I thought I'd share it with you. So um, in terms of where viewership is, there's a list of, you know, in the last quarter, which countries the viewers are coming from so i just wanted to share that with you so without a shadow of a doubt in first place is the us um and it's not even close it's it, it's like the audience from the united states is in, in terms of watching my videos is probably seven eight times larger than <laughs> its nearest uh challenger so that was i'm not saying that's entirely surprising um I just didn't think I knew that probably the US would be in number one spot, but I didn't know that the gap between first and second and third would be as great as it is. Um, so thank you for all those in the US who <laughs> who have taken the time and trouble to watch my videos and listen to my, you know, my London accent. Um, I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, in second place is my home country of, of of England stroke the UK but like I said it's a very distant second the UK so I'm slightly disappointed with that so um, fellow citizens of the UK you know help out one of your fellow you know citizens you know what I mean perhaps you know can you watch you know some of my videos maybe subscribe that kind of thing leave a comment um, yeah it would be nice to have you know some more interaction from those from the UK um yeah it just be really nice so underneath those two obvious ones the us and uk um it's followed by germany in third and this is where it gets interesting in fourth and fifth place respectively are georgia and slovenia now citizens of georgia and slovenia again thank you very much for watching my videos um I'm overwhelmed and touched by the very notion of it. So I can only assume that you're either English speakers or learning English, and I wouldn't advise learning English for me, basically. Um, or it's the translator, automatic translator function, maybe on YouTube, which is allowing you to watch my videos and see it in your own home language. So that's a really nice one in let's see one two three four five 
E, what, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. In sixth place uh, is the Netherlands. Thank you. From the, you know, people of the Flatlands. Thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate that. Then comes uh, Russia and Switzerland, followed by Ireland. And then uh, bringing up the rear are Spain and Latvia. So again, um, I'm just going to kind of overlook Spain. Not that I should just take it for granted type of thing. But more importantly, people of Latvia, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm rendered speechless by it. But um, yeah, it's just really nice. It's just a, it's a nice thing to have to think about in the back of your head that somebody in Latvia may be watching this video it, it kind of like freaks me out slightly um, so apart from where the audience comes from uh, by way of uh, nationality there was the other part of the analytics um, in terms of age distribution of my audience so um, unsurprisingly in first place it's the 55 to 64 year olds Thank you for representing. Um, yeah, it's very nice of you. In second place, there is the uh, 45s to the 54 year olds. And in third place, um, yeah, is the 18 to 24 year olds. So again, um, young people of England or the world or wherever you're coming from, thank you so much for spending your time with me. In that age group, I'm sure you've got other things to do like partying and chasing women or or men or whatever it is that your preference is. Um, but thank you for spending your, some of your, you know, your, your, not, I'm just trying to think of, yeah, in, in the younger person's mind, yeah, time seems to go fast kind of thing or my memory of being that kind of age. So um, thank you for spending some time with me. I really do appreciate that. So, uh, that will be the end of the analytics side of things. Let's get on with the actual main context of the video and the jazz albums that I have for you today. And like I said, these are albums that I've purchased, which I adore. I'm just going to show them to you. Hopefully, you're, well, you're going to listen to them for yourselves, make an informed decision as to whether or not they will fit in your collection. And I hope that one or two of them will um so yeah let's get on with it so we're gonna come hot out of the gates uh on this occasion um with a absolutely stonking uh jazz album um it's an album led by a jazz drummer and at some point i'm gonna do a video uh with like you know my in terms of my collection my top 10 albums where the ba the jazz band is led by a drummer so that's the context of it um this album it was released in, i'm trying to see when it was originally released uh 1978 the album's entitled future percussion and the artist in question is the tulio di piscopo quintet so let me just show you the cover for that sorry for the glare yeah decent cover i love jazz from italy i love that kind of thing there um never heard of the gentleman before listening to this album and i absolutely find it astonishing let me show you the rear side as well there you go so um yes it's just it's a barnstormer of an album this one um I'm not saying it's the elite tier of jazz, but there are touches of absolute genius on this album. Um, the track that I would, well, when you look down in the title section to this video, you'll find links uh, to individual tracks that I've chosen just to give you a sample of what's on the album. And then the link itself, I'm going to try and do it in a way that you can quite easily navigate your way from that track to hear the whole album in its entirety at your pleasure. So that's what I'll be doing in the area below in the title section so you can hear the tracks for yourselves. So, uh, Future Percussion, uh, Tulio du Piscopo Quintet. 
it's yeah the track that i would probably recommend from this particular album is called barbara um yeah this is a stonking album um yeah i'm so glad to have come across this one it's um it's got some powerhouse tracks on it as well as well as tracks of subtlety so it's it's a really nice journey this particular one um truly underrated um from what i can see i don't not that i'm watching other you know jazz videos on youtube i, I watch the the occasional one but um i don't really want to be influenced by other content makers out there in this this particular you know sector of youtube so i, I kind of want to keep my observations fresh and just what's ever in my mind and what i'm thinking about an album that's what you hear rather than what i've heard from other people yeah this album is underrated um if you can get your hands on it please do you'd be doing yourself a favor but give it a listen to first and i'll I'll say that about any of the albums that i present to you or all the albums i've ever presented to you have a listen for yourself see if it works for you um not sure about how available this is now i think you yeah um i think you've got 50 50 chance of getting it quite reasonably or you might have to wait for another repressing of it and that will probably be in the next six months to a year that type of thing but yeah um really happy with it solid jazz album so that's the first one today the second album is let's see if i can see when it was first released before i do anything else uh 1970 is the original uh year of release this is an album by it's just sorry the reason why i'm stalling is um the way that the graphics are yeah it's hard to pick out names um this uh, lloyd mcneil and this is the washington suite there you go so yeah um all the artists on this particular jazz album by way of the cover look really quite earnest he looks terribly bored um i don't think that was the ideal image to use of him uh, <laughs> to be quite honest so um lloyd mcneil if you haven't heard of him um he i've got there's very few artists that i've got more than let's say three albums of i think i've got four or five of his albums um and the reason is i like his his flute work he's very good with wind instruments lloyd mcneil himself and i do find his compositions to be imaginative um and on this particular one um he has some lighter albums than this one more playful this one is more kind of on the whole in terms of the album um it's thought provoking it's i won't say dystopian dystopian that's going too far um but there is an earnestness with this particular album it's well balanced it's um it's a beautiful thing to listen to um it's yeah i'm just trying to think of it it's yeah it, if you were starting off in jazz i wouldn't necessarily direct you in this particular album's direction this is one of those albums that once you've built up a collection and your knowledge of jazz is you know in the intermediate stage you've got over the beginnings you kind of know what you like and you don't like that's when i would say to you have a listen to this one um, and see what you think so i'm really happy to i've had this album for years and i don't listen to it as much as i should do and that's mainly because i've got you know quite a few albums now so um but i was glad to revisit it and this is one of the albums that i had featured in an old video where literally 14 people plus their cat and maybe some kind of parrot or budgie watched it no nobody else so i feel justified in showing you this album again it's it's definitely justified giving it a listen to 
it's not a waste of time by any stretch of the imagination now i'm just trying to think of what track that i really do prefer from this one uh let's see if i can just home rule home rule is the um track that i would go for from this it's a lively it's a thumping powerhouse tune again um just like on the first album i showed you it's um yeah it just you can feel the vigor behind it but the album itself in its entirety there's a lot to discover on here beautiful compositions played by extremely competent musicians so you should be able to find this one relatively easy if when you listen to it you find that it's to your taste so that's the second album today the third album was an absolute treat um, when I uh, first got my hands on it it's a 1975 release and it's by Oli uh, Arvilati Arvilati sounds like a um, Scandinavian uh, what's the discipline in driving it's um, of course it's not F1 what's it called again where you drive normal standard cars really quickly through forests why don't I... WRC there you go there you go a world rally championship he's got a name like one of those I expect him to be like um oh what's that guy who used to drive the Mitsubishi Tommy Mackinnon yeah Tommy Mackinnon that kind of but it's, it's that kind of name so the album's entitled Bandstand sorry for the waffling and going on all over the place let me show you the reverse of that suave looking gentleman have a look yeah yeah really do like this so um 1975 was the year of re release this particular album um really have enjoyed it since i purchased it it's lighter than in lighter in tone than the first two albums that i've shown you today on this episode but um i have just found this to be absolutely just chef's kiss it's just beautiful um it's it's light without being insignificant so sometimes with light jazz it becomes for some people anyway i won't use this terminology it sometimes becomes elevator music that's the kind of terminology that you know the 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 non-enthusiast would use they kind of lump everything in in terms of oh this is just background music it's elevator music no it's not quite like that it's not lounge as such but it's a it's the lighter side of jazz but it's done with such panache and ability that it kind of transports itself to a higher level than what you'd assume just by looking at the cover or listening to 30 seconds of any particular track um yeah this is a good album now on i think a previous video maybe during the european uh jazz yeah tw 10 european jazz albums i think on that episode i showed you one of his other albums and yeah the pair of them the pair of albums are really good um i highly encourage you to take a listen to it see what you think i'm a definite fan of it um it slots in very nicely in terms of my collection and my hunger and desire for european jazz but good european jazz not just any good european jazz this fits the bill so yeah that's the third album today oh i think i need a little sip of my coffee now give me a second now the <clears throat> now the fourth album today um i'm just so glad to get this particular album um i i'm a bit of a contrarian in the sense of wherever the prevailing wind is in jazz i don't follow it necessarily i go in the other direction and i try to seek out artists who are not spoken about in the you know i don't hear of them in either trade magazines or i don't know youtube videos in terms of jazz they're just not spoken about mainly because the people 
who are doing these videos never heard of them and can't be bothered to look for them kind of thing well i shouldn't even say that because i don't even know that's the case but they certainly don't talk about it but the album i'm about to show you is a 1963 release it's by well the album's entitled jazz frontier and it's by a gentleman called lou blackburn yeah i like that that's the yeah, let me show you it's just really playing on the other side so um yeah this album um happened to hear it in passing um fell in love with it um it's it probably doesn't have as many great compositions on it as the first three albums i've shown you but when it does get it right this particular album it is sensational and i am interested in terms of my collection to because my normal kind of what my taste would gravitate would be more saxophone and flute work I don't have a lot of trombone led uh, albums, jazz albums, so this was a really nice one to encounter. And it just doesn't, it, it hasn't let me down. It, I just think it's just, it has something, it has the X factor to it. So I was really happy to get my hands on this. So the track that I am going to probably highlight for the, in terms of the link down below for you to hear, would be a track called 17 Richmond Park which I think embodies what my knowledge is of this you know to represent this particular album I mean this artist this is a really good way of showing what he can do and the band can do it, it's yeah like I said it the album itself is not as well-rounded as the first three that I've shown you, but that's not to say it doesn't have strong merits on itself. And when it does really kick in, it kicks in with vigor. Um, the track that I've chosen is that kind of halfway house. Hopefully you're going to like it for yourself. Yeah, when I heard the track, I was just, wow, this is good. I must have it. Therefore, it's in my hands now. So, yeah look out for this yeah oh one of the things that really kind of like i don't know i don't have ocd but i i find it didn't anyone else notice why isn't that centered like pushed that way that seems to be centered the actual album title but the name there why why is the type set uh, done that uh, and the thing is I've, I've checked as well um because when I did, when I was looking for the links for these, uh, the videos that I'm going to, sorry, when I was uh, researching the links for, to put into these videos so you can hear it for yourself, I saw quite a few of these um, albums actually on the, on YouTube and they're all the same in terms of where his name is located. It's like really odd. Why would you do that? And why didn't somebody else notice? But there you go. Um, yeah. And like I said, it's a 1963 release, this one. Very good. When it gets it right, it's real good. So the fourth album today, I've had this on my shelf for ages and just was waiting for a time to present it to you. Now, it's a, let's see when it's 1968 was the year of uh, release it's the the album's entitled oriental jazz and it's by a gentleman called lloyd miller there you go and let me show you the reverse side there you go now as cover art <laughs> yeah um i've done a bit of photography and i kind of get in that era how you would do these kind of that image where you kind of superimpose one image on, and you do it in a dark room type of thing and it's exposure. Um, it looks naff. <laughs> I don't I don't think at any stage that was, a, you know, a particularly good idea. Um, but hey ho, that's what, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. Now, um, the interesting thing with uh, Lloyd Miller is, and I've got a couple of these albums, um, he spent his musical career basically traveling the world to exotic regions and um, sampling the local music traditions and his kind of 
and this is slightly unfair on him, but to explain it simplistically as I can, what he would do is um, on any given track, at least for the first minute or between one minute and two minutes, the introduction to a tune would be the sounds of what's influenced him in the Far East. It would have traditional instruments, many of which he, he has the ability to play himself. Um, so he will start off with those traditional sounds of the East, and then it will kick into what we all know to be a jazz tune kind of thing. So that's his kind of shtick. That's the way that he's gone about things. And it's interesting. Um, so the track that I'm going to uh, put in in the link down below is called Nonya Mira and Yonya. Yeah, Nonya Mira and Yonya. There you go. Uh, wonderful track. Um, in fact, the whole album is lovely. You just kind of got to know what you're getting into. And like I said, his thing is two, one to two minutes of the beginning of any given track will be the native sound, the sound that interests him. Then it kicks into the, a normal kind of jazz track. Um, fantastic compositions on this particular album. Um, this is a joy. Again, it's an album that I don't play enough and it was really nice to revisit it. Um, not only for you as the audience in terms of what, you know, if you've never heard of this before, you'd be hearing it for the first time, but me rediscovering it, absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, like I said, look out for this one. I think you can still get this one relatively easy because there's not like a high, it's not a high demand album, but that's not to say it isn't fantastic jazz on there. But I just think people who have, may have encountered it didn't quite know what was going on in terms of how he goes about constructing compositions. And like I said, it's to do with first two minutes of native sounds, then jazz. Okay. So yeah, good album, really good. So how many down is that? That's five down. We've got another five to go now. Um, oh, let me take another sip. Give me a second. Now, the next album is a bit of a unicorn. And the reason for saying that is not to do with the artists themselves. It's to do with what label it's on. Um, I very rarely show the big label products um, in my videos because I assume that most people, because it's on a big label, would have heard it and have purchased it if they wanted it. But I liked this album enough. And I've got a feeling, despite it being on a big label, I don't think, I think it's going to be ignored by the majority of people who are buying jazz and have a thing for that label would probably overlook it because it's not a artist. It's not a big name artist where you'd be easily able to resell it to somebody kind of thing. It's, it's not that kind of, it doesn't, the artist himself quite unfairly, doesn't have the kudos of you know the big established names on this particular um, record label so I think we're relatively safe that no one else is really talking about it so this is let's see if I can figure out quickly when this was originally released it's a 1968 uh, re uh, release it's on the Blue Note record label and it's Kenny Cox there you go that's a really nice, I do like the composition of the photograph there, the looking down aspect of it. Um, I kind of, yeah, I, I like that. Either looking down at the artist themselves, I, I, so somebody's on a stepladder or something, or I like it looking up from like, they're in a grave looking up, you know, and the people, just imagine the artist standing around the edge of the grave. I like that kind of looking up kind of thing as well. I don't know what I literally looked up there that was really strange <laughs> so um this album um got it for a good price I I'm not gonna lie for it and that was part of my influence but 
I, I'm just trying to think if I, I almost had an answer there immediately for you. If it wasn't at the price that I purchased it at, which was a really good price, would I have bought it if it was the full price like normal new Blue Note records? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But a, a good album in and of itself. Um, the track that I would recommend from this album is Trance Dance. I don't know, did I show you the reverse side? There you go. Just so you can see it for yourself. Um, yeah, it's, and the reason why I chose that particular track, it's one of those few danceable jazz tracks. Um, as you well know from listening to jazz, there's not a lot of the tracks that you can lis literally be swaying to. You, you more than likely be going, mm, like that with the, the vast majority of jazz track but the track that i've chosen from this album it's you can get into a little shoulder shuffle with it um the album itself if you can get it for a good price it's a bit up and down it's not a consistent album and that's reflected by this is quite early on in kenny cox's career so in terms of uh, it, it's wholly understandable in terms of this was your big break at Blue Note. They probably said to you, get an album out there quickly and see what actually happens. We'll see where you are in the pecking order type thing. Um, so then it may be the case of they didn't have enough time to get composition, original compositions and all that, get it all lined up that it's an absolutely from back to front an outstanding album no i'm not going to go that far with it there are glimpses of absolute genius on here um but it's not the majority of the album so i would say of these six tracks it's like 50 percent are really good and i i think that's why um price to performance i went with it because it's kind of like there are three absolutely solid tracks on here um, and for the price that's well worth it and I have on many other occasions spent far more money just to get one track maybe two tracks on any particular jazz album so that's kind of the way that my methodology works so really glad to have it if you do see it in the wild as I said if you can get it for a good price really really think about adding it to your collection um, as you can see I certainly did so with four to go right the next album is an absolute delight um, I only came across uh, this gentleman's work in the last few years I had this album for a while the originally came out in 1973 on the mainstream record label uh, the album's entitled Windows, and it's by Jack Wilkins. There you go. And I'll show you the reverse. There you go. So, um, this album, so again, it's, a, the really strong tracks on here are mind-blowing. They are top tier I don't think the gentleman gets the amount of respect that he should get for jazz guitar. Um, yeah, can you put him in the category of somebody like Wes Montgomery? No, you can't. No, but I'm not saying that he's that far below either. Um, there are some fat, yeah, like I said, there's it's a six track album, three tracks on here, absolutely just, yeah, for me anyway absolutely stunning tracks um Neymar uh, a Coltrane track um that's a fantastic composition he does really good work on on his version of it but the track that I bought this album for and couldn't live without is Red Clay that's an absolute stonker and Red Clay I'm just trying to think of I think is it Freddie Hubbard I think it's a Freddie Hubbard original composition. His version, I'm not saying it's better than Freddie Hubbard's version. 
I'm saying it's it stands on its own merit as a really fantastic track. I want you to listen to it, see what you think. It's again, it's on the more danceable side of jazz. So hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Um, I certainly was blown away when I first heard it. I couldn't get enough of it. Hopefully you'll feel the same. Um, yeah, just you should be able to get it. Um, hopefully in your territory relatively easily. Um, again, I just think it's one of those kind of albums where it's been ignored because it's not a heavy hitting name rather than the quality of the actual output of this gentleman. So it's going to be down below in the link so you can hear it for yourself. So we're getting to that point in the video um, where I can see the memory card's going to be running out. So we're going to get a, one of those kind of awkward jump cuts at some point. Um, I try and make the transition as <laughs> as palatable as possible, but I can make no promises. The next album, uh, just trying to see the year of release before I do anything else. Can I work it out quickly? No, I can't. <laughs> um, it's on the Atlantic uh, record label. Um, it's the album's entitled Blues Shout and the artist's name is Leo Wright. There you go, yeah. So, again, I got this album, um, I've seen this album around for years since I kind of got into jazz vinyl quite seriously. Um, I had seen this about and I just completely ignored it. It's not fair. I don't know why I did do, did that. But um, once I took the opportunity to actually listen to the album, my whole kind of perspective on it changed. It was kind of, why didn't I buy this much earlier than I actually did? It's got a lot going for it. It's extremely musical. Um, it's... It's just got a fine balance to this album where the compositions and the musicianship just works in such tight kind of it's not combination, conjunction with each other that it's just a wholly pleasurable experience. Um, so it's an album mixture mixed of uh, original compositions and standards. I tend to gravitate toward the um, more um, original compositions on this album, but just it's just a delight in terms of the instruments being played, the musicianship, everything is fantastic. Um, so one to consider for your collection. I still think you can purchase this album from the right place at the right time. You should be able to get this album for not cheap as chips, but you should get, be able to get it relatively cheaply in the scheme of things. The track that I would recommend from this album is the first track on the side A, and that's Siggy, S-I-G-I. -I. Really good composition. Well, it's worth its weight in gold kind of thing. Um, I, It's kind of nice that I've kind of bought it for that particular track, but it's kind of nice that I found maybe two or three other tracks on this album, which I felt I would have wanted anyway. So that was a really nice thing. Um, so there you go. You should be able to get your hands on this one. I'm going to leave a link down below so you can hear it for yourself. If you think it's going to work in your collection, seek it out, but do some research in terms of don't just go with the first retailer who's offering it for sale. Have a look at quite a few because you might be able to get a deal on it because the gentleman himself is not considered elite level jazz performer, which is a real shame. He, okay, there only can be a few in the elite category, but he's he's not far off it anyway. So, uh, What I think I'll do is pause this video here so we can do the last three and we can do a nice little jump cut. So give me a second. Hello. So back again, we're down to our last two albums of today's video. And I'm really excited by the last two. Um, 
we're doing something slightly different than usual. I'm just trying to figure out if I can see when the next one, next album I'm going to present to you was released. Uh, 1967. The album's entitled Sunday Walk and it's by Jean-Luc Ponte on the MPS label. So let me show it to you. And the reverse side. And that's going to give you a real strong indication of what to expect on this particular album. So, um, yes, to explain the context, um, I've got a soft spot for not only French jazz of a particular era, but French jazz, which stretches you. And I think that's one of the kind of characteristics of this era of French jazz. So I've got maybe across maybe five artists. I may have maybe about 10 albums and they all superb because they, they challenge, but not in a way that's unpleasant or jarring it's just their interpretation of things is slightly different to what the americans the english or anyone else was doing at that particular time or since um so this is uh jazz but the lead instrument is a violin now don't let that put you off the, there is a subtlety a beauty a yeah it's just in terms of painting vistas in music this certainly does it um and the album from so some of the albums that i've shown you you know 50 percent of it's good 50 percent of it's a bit mediocre this album is an experience i would just take it in its entirety it is a lovely journey in jazz this particular one but you have to understand what it is. Um, it's not trying to ape what the Americans are doing. It's not trying to do that. It's got its own distinct sound. And that sound to me and to my ears and in terms of my own collection and what I find interesting, it ticks every single box. So I am really happy to have, well, like I should explain, I, I saw this album out in the wild again for years and ignored it um, and I do regret that I should have got my hands on this a lot earlier than I did not to say that I paid over the odds for this one I certainly didn't it was at a reasonable price but there's certain albums by certain artists which will attract me and this is certainly one of those as well hopefully you guys out there are gonna kind of get where i'm coming from on this particular album it's not for everyone and particularly if you're new to collecting and listening to jazz you might find it slightly jarring so i would say this is more for the the intermediate and beyond taste or experience in jazz kind of listener type thing it's it's not for the beginner um, you kind of got to work your way into it. Um, but yes, I just think this is just a really nice experience, this album. Now, I'm just trying to remember which track that I really do like from this album. So give me a second to quickly have a look. Uh, Sweet for Claudia. That's the track that I would probably nominate from this album. I just think it's a real touch of class um yeah that, that's if i was just you know one word encapsulates this particular album classy that's what it is it's just classy so hopefully you'll feel the same if you don't if you think it's a load of garbage <laughs> which i'd be surprised if you do think like that but if you do i have to accept it um if you do disagree with me put it down in the comment section telling me why you think you don't like this particular album but certainly if you've never heard it or you've never seen it or heard it give it a listen it's a different experience okay a valuable experience but just different to what you may have what you may have in your collection already so give it a go and the final album 
of today's roundup. Um, again, it, it when I came, when I came across it, it ticked so many boxes. It's a uh, it's on, on, and once hearing it, it's kind of a really good album by a really good artist who perhaps doesn't get uh, received the love and attention and respect that they should do which is always a shame but that's just life type thing uh if i've i'm just trying to see when uh i think the release date's 1973 i think anyway um the the album itself is entitled almor ravid almor ravid almor Almo Ravid, yeah, I think the Almo Ravid, and it's by a artist called Joe Chambers, um, and it's yeah. Let me just show you. There you go. Yeah, like that. Let me show you the reverse side. So this is um, a themed album. So like with the Lloyd Miller, where he was taking samples from the you know the east and you know merging it with jazz you know american jazz traditions this is doing something similar yet different so it definitely has an eastern flavor to it there is no doubt about it and it's a really good thing on this album and again it's a really good contrast with how lloyd miller does it um so the i'm just trying to think of the the track that I would go from this one, well, I would highlight from this particular album is Early Minor. Um, let me just tell you who's on this album um, by way of artists. So Joe Chambers himself on drums. Again, I've just got to do, even if I'm repeating myself in terms of video content, I should do a video on jazz drummers, drum, you know, jazz albums led by jazz drummers type thing. Do like a, a 10 from my collection. So Cedar Walton on piano is on this. Um, uh, who else did I see? Uh, Woody Shaw on trumpet. Garnet Brown on trombone. Harold Vick on flute and tenor sax. And Cecil McBee on bass. Um, all who have featured on this particular album. That is a powerhouse lineup. <laughs> and um, it's kind of strange that this album again is not spoken about in the ways that other bigger name artists are because in and of itself this this is up there this is this is real good this one um it has a when it gets it right it's almost magisterial it you can feel and hear the elite level composition and musicianship on certain tracks um as a whole album, as a whole experience, I think this is one of those albums that, again, and then not all jazz albums, you know, from front to back are consistent in terms of the compositions and the musicianship. And that's for a number of reasons. But this is a themed album, and I, I tend to like those ones in jazz as well, where there is an overarching theme to it. Um, so you've got to listen to it in its entirety, um, taking sections out kind of does the album itself a disservice. So it's, it's just really nice to come across albums such as this. So I got it for a good price. I think you can still get this relatively easily, but I think that their prices have crept up in terms of they're getting, if they are available, there's not a lot of them. So you might find yourself paying slightly over the odds for it but depending on your collection and where you're at and how you respond to listening to this particular album you will decide whether or not you feel it's a worthwhile purchase i certainly did i i adore this album so um it's just yeah it's it's very welcome to my collection so again joe chambers the almo Almo Ravid. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that slightly off kilter, but that's the best I can do. Um, 
have a look at look out for it have a listen to it i'll leave a link down below see what you think so that was the 10th and final album of today's roundup um i hope that you enjoyed today's video i certainly enjoyed getting these albums together and they're all different from each other okay there's similarities between that and the lloyd miller in terms of the eastern flavors but they have different ways of interpreting it and how it, those compositions work but there's something there's a different aspect of jazz hopefully from what the 10 albums i've shown you each album is slightly different so i'm hoping that at least one two maybe three that you've never seen never heard of before will impress you enough to add to your own personal collections i hope that's the case if you find that all my choices were terrible today um please let me know in the comment section and i'll work on that for the next video but um thank you so much for joining me today it's been an absolute pleasure and like i said um happy 2023 to everyone out there um please um if you found the video um mildly amusing mildly informative and you think i'm deserving of it um please consider subscribing to the channel uh please drop a like because as i understand it i'm not really technically proficient in terms of how youtube work and the algorithms and all that kind of stuff but as i understand it the more likes um a video has the more it's kind of suggested to other people so as important as the subscriber numbers are kind of thing the likes are really important as well so if you think i'm deserving of it please drop a like down below as i said consider subscribing and leaving a comment down below whether you agree or disagree with my 10 choices today or you have suggestions of your own for albums for jazz albums for me to pursue um for my own collection something that by watching my videos you kind of understood my taste and you've gone like oh you should give this a listen yeah put it down below i can add it to my list of things to uh, to pursue you know i need albums to you know to listen to um new ones um yeah that'd be really nice of you guys out there if you could do that for me um really appreciative so until the next video um please look after yourselves stay safe enjoy the year in in front of us um love and cherish your friends and family <laughs> and i'm like really saccharine now. um i will see you soon for another video so until then please look after yourselves take care Bye-bye.